Welcome to Studio Lodge Cree. This is Larry Krieg's Rail Video 30, Monorails, Moonshine or Mass Transportation. Monorails evoke a futuristic image with a certain amount of excitement and romance. In fact, the idea was first advanced and tried in the early decades of the 19th century. So let's take a look at how monorails have progressed, where they've succeeded, what they're good for, if anything, and what their role in transportation is. Then, in our companion video, Monorails Around the World, let's ride monorails in Europe, North America, and Asia to discover the reality behind the romance. When and where did the idea originate? Rail-guided transportation systems using mechanical power were first seriously developed during the early 1800s. Most inventors used the familiar two-rail system, but using a single rail was prototyped as early as 1820 by Ivan Kirillovich Elmanov. In 1821, Englishman Henry Robinson Palmer patented a hanging single-rail system, but it was never built. The late 1800s saw development of several unique monorail systems, such as Leroy Stone's 1875 steam-powered monorail. It straddled an elevated beam to transport visitors 155 meters between halls of the Philadelphia Centennial Exhibition. In the 1880s, monorails based on Frenchman Charles Lartigue were built in France and Ireland. The weight is carried on the upper rail of an A-frame track structure, while small wheels attempt to balance the vehicles using the two lower rails. From 1888 to 1924, the Listowel and Ballybunion Railway was operated in Ireland on Lartigue's principle. A big drawback of this system was the unreliability of the balance system, necessitating careful balance of weight in each carriage. In 2003, Lartigue Monorail Restoration Committee, a voluntary organization from Listowel, opened a one kilometer, six tenth of a mile section of Lartigue Monorail on the track bed of the former North Kerry Line in Listowel. The early 20th century saw various experimental monorails, such as this gyroscopically balanced one by Irish-Australian engineer Lewis Philip Brennan. Probably the most enduring of the late 19th century designs is that of German Eugen Langen. Construction began in 1897 of the Wuppertaler Schwebebahn. It is still in operation 123 years later, carrying about 25 million passengers in normal years. So, what are monorails good for? Are they more than a curiosity? Take a look at this chart, which gives a rough idea of the capacity of several urban transport modes. Capacity is measured in passengers per hour, with the lowest capacity at the top of the chart, bus rapid transit, BRT, and light rail vehicles, LRV, can run either at grade, that is, with regular traffic, or separated. Separation can be by dedicated lanes, by crossing gates, by elevation, or by tunnels. These systems can carry between 2,700 and 16,200 passengers per hour, depending on grade separation, size of vehicle, frequency, and other factors. At the high capacity end of the chart are the heavy rail systems, the subways, elevated railways, and similar urban train systems. Manufacturer Bombardier claims their heavy rail system can carry up to 120,000 people per hour. 30,000 per hour is probably more common. In the middle of the chart are monorails and APMs, which are automated people movers. These share many characteristics, and most carry roughly 20 to 45,000 passengers per hour, though at least one monorail system has been designed and built for high-capacity use and is reported to carry over 90,000 passengers per hour. In most cases, APMs and monorails fill a niche in the urban transport ecology between the LRVs and BRTs for corridors with moderate demand and heavy rail systems for very high-demand situations. Let's zoom in now on the types of monorail and APM systems. First of all, don't let the names fool you. Monorails may be automated or not, but they're still not called APMs. 
APMs run on flat guideways, either with conventional rails like the Vancouver and JFK Airport Skytrains, or on strips of metal or pavement for rubber tires, with guide rails in the center or on the sides like Japan's Kobe Portliner, which was the first operational APM in 1984, as well as systems in Paris, Toulouse, and elsewhere. Magnetic levitation systems are also similar to monorails. Five maglev systems are also in service. The Shanghai Airport high-speed maglev and two medium-speed Chinese systems, a low-speed system shuttle for an airport in Korea, and Japan's suburban Nagoya Limimo running at conventional railroad speeds. These are not monorails either. In normal operation, these run with no wheels. The vehicle's weight is levitated by magnetism, which is where the name comes from. There are two types of true monorail. The first being those that are suspended from an overhead support, like the Wuppertal system in Germany and the Chiba Urban Monorail and Shonan monorails in Japan. The second type is more common. They straddle a beam and run along the top of it. Monorails are not as common as APMs, but they offer some advantages. Both APMs and monorails must normally be totally grade separated. That is, they cannot cross roads or pedestrian walkways at the same level. APMs would be unsafe mixing with other traffic because they have no human driver, and due to their early development, their obstacle detection systems are not up to contemporary standards. Suspended monorails would lose their advantage if they ran at ground level with other traffic. And straddle beam systems have a substantial raised beam that would make crossing very challenging for pedestrians and impossible for cars and trucks. APMs and monorails both have an advantage over elevated railways. They are lighter and more maneuverable, so they can climb steeper grades and negotiate sharper curves. Monorails have a slight advantage over APMs because their beam, or track, is narrower than an APM guideway. That may make them somewhat less expensive and less visually disruptive to the environment. On the other hand, APMs are better in tunnels because they generally require less vertical space than monorails, so they can run in smaller tunnels. The city of Chongqing, China, with a metro population of about 30 million, is said to have the longest and busiest monorail system in the world. As of 2021, there are seven high-capacity transit lines, five of which are standard heavy rail subway type, and two are monorails. I've never been to China, so I can't show photos of my own, but here are clips from a Google Earth tour and a couple of Wikimedia photos. Line 2 monorail is 19 miles long. Line 3 monorail is 41 miles long for a total of 60.5 miles or 97.4 kilometers. Using six-car trains, Line 2 carries about 30,000 passengers per hour. Line 3 is the champion carrying a reported 90,000 passengers per hour in eight-car trains. The choice of monorail is said to be based on the rugged mountain terrain and density of urban buildings in Chongqing. Monorails provide a lower cost solution than heavy rail with the added benefit of less obtrusive superstructure and greater agility climbing and turning. Though most of the routing is above ground on pylons, significant portions of the monorails run through tunnels. Most active monorails, like the Chongqing system, are straddle beam type. The hanging type is less common. Their support structures have to extend above the height of the vehicle, so their cost is higher and they are more visually obtrusive. We'll see examples of each in the companion video. The Wuppertal Schwebebahn in Germany is the premier example of the hanging monorail type, having operated successfully for nearly 120 years. The Shonan monorail in the southern suburbs of Yokohama, Japan, but the only other one I've ridden on is the Chiba Urban monorail in the eastern suburbs of Tokyo. The more common type of monorail is the straddle beam or Alweg type. It was designed in the 1950s by Swedish industrialist Axel Lennart Wenner-Gren. The name Alweg is based on his initials. 
Werner Gren founded a company in Germany to develop the concept, the first example of which was the Disneyland monorail system, which opened in 1959 and is still operational. Thank you for watching Larry Krieg's Rail Video 30, Monorails, Moonshine or Mass Transportation. Be sure to see our companion video, Monorails Around the World, where we'll follow the development of monorails by riding representative systems in Europe, America and Asia.